I'm Duke McDowell. I'm president of Sterling Custom Homes. I want to welcome you here to be a part of the Sterling Custom Homes Custom Home Building Seminar. So let's kind of go through the choosing your builder uh, and talk about that. Uh, your choosing builder. Look at the builder that, that builds within your price range and your location. These are some quantifications that we want to go through and, and begin to get you guys to start thinking about. What you don't want to do is find a, a builder that goes from one side of town to the other. If he says he can do that, you guys need to run. And uh, for the whole mere fact, he can't put all that windshield time on his, uh, his pickup and actually do your customer a good job. Research uh, the builder through their websites. I mean, the web is a great tool today. It's definitely an area that uh, you can go and you can pick up so much information about that builder. Look at his website. Go uh, and see what kind of information that he has on his website. See what kind of builder he is and the product that he produces. Uh, another good place is go ahead and seek advice uh, from past clients, his friends, associates, any other realtors that may be involved in him that, he, that has done in the past. Begin to do your due diligence on that, that builder and ask those questions. And then uh, also ask that builder for a list of uh, clients that he's had in the past. Don't let him give you a list of three names. Let him give you the list of about 30 or 40 names. Okay, and then you choose which one you want to call. So do your due diligence as you go through it and begin to find out what kind of builder is he. Is he willing to give me a list of 100 people and are everybody that he's built for, is he a guy that's going to selectively go in there and pick out the five or six that he knows he's going to get that raving review from. Uh, so as we kind of go through and we, we're continuing into uh, choosing that builder, what, what should we ask him? Uh, we need to inquire about the, uh, the builder's financial ability. So you want to go through and, and begin to talk about his financial ability. How long has he been in business? What can he actually handle? Um, how much money does he deal with on a daily basis? Uh, start asking some real good questions about the financial side of it. Find out about what the builder does to ensure his quality craftsmanship. Does he have the same trade partners and subcontractors and vendors from the very beginning? If he's been, been in business 18 years or 10 years or 5 years, using some of the same people that he chose 18 years ago. It gives you the consistency that tells you that, hey, he's going to take care of my client. He's been doing and using the same cabinet man for 18 years, and so my cabinets are going to basically look like the same. So ask him how he ensures that quality and that craftsmanship. Determine what the builder uses to develop the tools and the process and organization and the efficiency within his business. Uh, what tools does he have in place? What does he do that makes him different than anybody else? What kind of processes? Because let's face it, I mean, builders today, we don't hammer anything anymore. We don't go out there and put up nails and studs and start hammering things. We hire it out. So we have to have the processes and stuff in place. We have to go in and, and begin to organize ourselves, our business, and be able to go through the whole structure to come up with the end product, which is a perfect house. Uh, find out from the builder as he handles, uh, how he handles those change orders and those allowances. You know, how does he handle those uh, ups, those downs, the costs that's in, incurred, the change order process? You know, all of these things that are critical as you go through the whole process of building. Uh, determine how he's been recognized in the past through either different awards, uh, different things that he's done within his industry. Uh, has he gone out and got a, a graduate uh, master builder program or uh, some of the things that you see on our bios? Master builders, only 350 of them in the United States. I mean, that's a very high honor. So it's something that, that we go and we dedicate ourselves in, in the different, not only in the innovative design side of it that we equate all that to, but also from an educational side, just like you guys are here today. Uh, determine how the builder communicates uh, with the client in the digital world that we live in, especially because it's Austin, Texas, uh, we have to be able to go in and, and communicate with that buyer in a, in a manner in which makes the most sense. So ask him how he does that. Ask him how he goes in and ongoing programs that he puts in place for warranty service and not only just uh, the, the service but a after the sales service. What is he going to do after that house is a year old, two years old, ten years old? These are questions that you want to go through and, and begin to research. So let's kind of move through uh, one of the big topics that are out there a lot of times is how does this builder price his house? Does he go in and does he do it fixed price or cost plus? And let's talk about what those differences are. Uh, a cost plus builder, the buyer takes a lot of the risk uh, from the cost fluctuations in a cost plus environment. If the prices go up, the, the builder really doesn't care because he's getting paid a certain percentage based on whatever he spends, he's, his, his number's fixed. So in a cost plus environment, it, it, the fluctuating of those prices is, is a negative. So the cost plus builder basically comes out there and he gives you a price and, and as the prices fluctuate, 
Um, he, you know, you're charged basically whatever he comes up with as those numbers. The builder profit, the positive side is the builder profit is, is sometimes guaranteed. Uh, that's on my side of the fence uh, because I know that I'm going to make 15%. I know I'm going to make 18% for everything that I sell. Okay, so it's to my advantage to get you to spend that $1.1 million. Uh, the undetermined total uh, uh, job cost, that's a problem. To me, you can't just go out there and set this thing up at a million dollars and you end up in a million one and the people can't afford it. What are you going to do with the project when that happens? Let's talk a little bit about fixed price. Typically, fixed price is a builder goes out there in a custom world. He's going to come in and he's going to fix price certain items and then he's going to allowance other items. And those allowance items are typically customer selection items. And those customer selection items uh, that they put down there uh, the builder will interview the customer and figure out what it is that they're actually wanting. Again, the, the fixed price, the builder has to spend a little bit more time up front uh, than he does later in the process. So this is some of the reason why you see so many builders out there. They may be onesie twosie builders and they want to do it on a cost plus standpoint it's because they don't have the staff, they don't have the people to actually go out there and investigate all those prices that could either be going up and down to give a realistic price back to your customer. So also, too, in a fixed price, it aligns the builder and the client towards achieving a, a, their budget objectives. And the way it does that is it makes the builder up front go through, what is it going to cost me to build this house? What is it going to truly cost me to do that? And I've got to do some investigation work up front. I've got to give you more of a realistic number. Why? Because I'm taking the risk. Okay, I begin, I'm fixed priced, I'm, I'm fixed on my numbers, I can't let it oscillate one way or the other, or I'm going to make the customer mad as I go through the whole process. So you've got to get more information up front, and that takes time. Uh, it better identifies the total project cost up front. It's an important tool. So you make the decision on how you want to go on a cost plus or fixed price.